welcome back. I hope you're having a great day. So for this fluffy flower cardigan tutorial, some of the things you're gonna need are three colors of yarn, one color for your petals, one color for the middle part of the petal. I don't know what that's called. And a base color for like your whole cardigan. So I use the Super Savers yarn in the color Orchid and each of these is 198 grams. And I used about like almost a full three of them. Some of the other things you'll need are a pair of scissors, a crochet needle. If you don't have this, you can also use your crochet hook as a replacement. This isn't fully necessary, but the hook I use is a 4.5 millimeter size hook and some bobby pins or stitch markers. So the written pattern will be in the description if you want to use that to follow along. I think it's really helpful. And for sizing reference, I wear about a size small and that's how I made this sweater, but it's very size adjustable while you're making it. Just make sure to like measure the panels against you as you go. And yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll get back to you. If you end up making this sweater, let me know. Send me a picture on Instagram or on TikTok at Lala Perez. Yeah, I hope you like the sweater. Let's get into the tutorial. Hello everyone, welcome back to this tutorial. Today, it is the middle of summer and I decided to make a fluffy cardigan, like a really like big one. Cause I saw some inspo images and I was really inspired. So I'm gonna teach you how I made mine. So starting off, I'm first gonna show you how to do the front panel. First gonna start off with a slip knot. So how I do it is I hold my yarn like this, exit over, pinch that center point, push my two fingers through and grab the yarn and pull it through like that until I have this loop. I tighten it off. And then for my front panel, just for reference, like I'm making about a size small. For my front panel, I'm gonna do a chain of 23. So how you chain is like this, you go under, grab and pull it through, that's one. Under, grab, two. Under, grab, three under grab four then hold on to here it makes it more sturdy five six seven like that all the way until you reach 23. so let me do that real quick and i'll show you the next steps okay so here i have a chain of 23. we're going to use this foundation chain for two of the front panels and then we're going to do the same chain but it's going to be longer for the back and then the same chain, but also longer for the sleeve. So I'll explain that a little bit later. And if you also want the written version of it all, cause that, I think that really helps in like a visual, go check out my blog post where you can see everything and like use it alongside as you're making it. But now we're gonna start doing the half double crochets. And just saying this whole pattern, this little thing, it's not like the classic half double crochet, it's a half double crochet through or in between the posts. But I'll show you that once we reach row two. But for row one, we're gonna look at our chain, you're gonna see these Vs running along. And we're gonna skip this first one, and we're gonna push our hook through this second one, okay? So first you wanna yarn over, Go into that second opening, grab the yarn on the other side and bring it back around. Now you have three loops on your uh, on your hook. Yarn over one more time and pull this one through all three, like so. So again, yarning over, going into that second opening right here, grabbing the yarn, pulling it back, yarn over, pull through. So again, looking at our chain, the next one is right here. Running over, pushing through, grabbing your yarn, pulling it back, yarn over and pull it through. So like this. So we're gonna do a half double crochet into each of these chains, right? Until we reach the last one. And I'll meet you back 
at this end so I can show you how to move on to row two and continue these half double crochets. So let me finish this and I'll be right back. All right, this is what she's looking like. I have two more. So let me do that real quick. Then the last one, right? Easy, okay? Then you're just gonna chain two. I'm gonna go under, chain one, chain two. We're gonna flip our work around. And now we're gonna go through the post, so. The post are these clusters that we were initially doing of the double crochet. We're gonna go in between here. When you look at the top, you'll see these V's running along it. And then on the side, you also see like these V's right here. You wanna go under these and through the post. And if, if it helps, like when you stretch out your work, you can see the exact openings that you're gonna go in through while you're doing your work. So just to show you right here, this is the first one. So I'm gonna yarn over, go in, grab my yarn, come back and do my first, oops, my first half double crochet. And then again, yarning over, pushing through this next opening grabbing the yarn, coming back, half double crochet. So again, we just went in through right there. Now we're gonna go in right here. So yarning over, pushing through, half double crochet. begin to look like this and we're going to keep doing this all the way until we reach the end and I'll meet you here to show you how to continue and how to do this end bit because it can be a little tough if you don't know exactly the chain and whatnot well I'll just I'll explain when I get there Okay, so here I have one, two, and then three. We're gonna go in between the post and the chain for the last one. So let me get there. Right, and then this last one, it's harder to see. We're gonna go, this is the two chains we did, and then this is the post. So pushing in between there. And then yes, that's the end of row two. Moving on to row three, just gonna chain two again. In between every row transition, make sure you chain two. Flip our work around. And again, we're gonna go in between the post. So yarning over, going into this first one, doing our first half, half double crochet. And then again, you see this, this, this right here. Next one. All right. So we're gonna continue doing these half double crochets all along here, back and forth, you know, chaining two in between and making sure that you're going in between the post like so until we reach like the length that you want your front panel to be. This is like really size adjustable. If you want like a larger size, you know, like it to be wider, just add more and whatnot. But I have my final piece. So for me, this is what we're doing right now, right? And we're gonna continue all the way until it's long enough as we want, you know? 
So for me, my final measurements is a width of about seven inches, a little less, seven, six and three fourths inches, really, if you wanna be extra detailed. And then it's a length of 12 and a half inches, okay? So again, we're gonna chain 23 at the bottom and continue all the way up. Next is the back piece. I can pull you out a little. You can see everything that's going on, but this is my back piece. It has to be the same length as your front, pa um, front panels, right? Because you wanna be able to make it even. So for the back panel, we're gonna start off for the foundation chain. You wanna chain 65 and then do our half double crochets all the way here. So it's a total of 18 and a half inches in width. And again, 12 and a half inches in length, all right? So, and then we're gonna have the sleeve, okay? So just as a visual, little visual, <laughs> imagine, right? Back panel, front panel, and sleeve. This is like a puffy sleeve, so we're gonna cinch the wrist a little bit, but we're gonna start the foundation chain here, and the sleeve, you wanna do a chain of 50, right? And then do our half double crochets all the way along here. And this is like pretty large, it's like falling off my table, but the chain of 50 is down here, and that is 14 and a half inches. And then I went a length of 18 and a half inches, okay? So make sure, oops, make sure you make two sleeves, two front panels, and one back piece. If you need any more clarification or another visual reference, make sure to check the description and you can look at my blog. I think that will help. But after we make all of these pieces, next we're gonna move on to the ribbing, okay? So I will be right back. All right, so now we're gonna do the ribbing for the neck, the bottom part, and the wrist cuffs. So I'm gonna show you how to do the wrist cuff first. We're gonna do a slip knot, holding it like this, X, pinch the center, and grab it, or you know, however you start your slip knots. And then for me, where is my paper? Okay, for me, um, for the cuffs or the ones around our wrist, right? I'm gonna do a chain of nine. So I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, okay? Then we're gonna look at our chain. We're gonna skip that last one. I'm gonna go into the second one. We're gonna do a half double crochet. So yarning over, going in, grabbing it and doing our thing. Next one. We do half double crochets all the way until we reach this last one. What is on my hand? I think that's a little bit of peanut butter. I am sorry, I just had a snack. Um, this last one, right? She's looking like this. That will be the the length on your wrist if you wanna check. We can always make this shorter or longer as you please. And then I'm gonna chain two, one, two, flip our work. And now we're gonna look at the top, okay? We're gonna see the Vs running along the, the top. Skip the first two, because that was our chain two. So one, two, we're gonna go into this one, but we're gonna go only through the um the v that's furthest away from us the back stitch that's what it's called so the v usually has two right but you don't want that you just want to go through 
right through the middle and then through the back like that doing half double crochet so yarning over going in like so and doing our half double crochet Right, so we're gonna keep doing this back and forth until it's wide enough to cover your wrist. All right, so again, I'll just show you until the end. Here we have two more one, two. And then the last one. Right, and again, chain two in between every row. Flip our work, skip those first two, go into this first one. The, this is the first official one. And continue. Okay. So in the end, this is what my cuff looks like, right? If we continue it, it should be enough to Wrap around your wrist like nicely, not too, too tight, just like a little room. So for me, this is a length of about seven and a quarter inch, okay? So this is the bottom ribbing, the one that'll go at the, you know, the bottom of the sweater right here, like so. So this measures a total of, this measures a total of 32 and a half inches. And then lastly, we have the one that will go in the front or around the necks and alongside the front panel, right? And this measures, oh, for the bottom ribbing, you wanna make sure to do a chain of eight and then do the half double crochet through the back stitch, just like we did for the arm cuff. It's just a little thinner, right? So chain eight, go all the way to 32 and a half inches. And then for the one that goes around our neck, you wanna do a chain of seven, all right? Just in case, like I know this is a lot of info, I'll have it all written out nice and neat in my blog. Link will be in the description as always. So around this middle ribbing, the one that goes around our neck and then along the front panel, 38 and a half inches, okay? So in the end, you want two arm cuffs, one for the middle and one for the bottom. Now we'll be moving on to these fluffy, puffy flowers. So I made mine with five petals. I just prefer, I just like it like that for some reason, but you can also make it with six, okay? So you're gonna take your yarn, the one that's gonna be the petal color, gonna wrap it across your three middle fingers, you're gonna hold this down with your thumb. You're gonna take the anchor yarn, the one attached to the yarn ball, you're gonna wrap it under this way towards the center, and then exit in the back and then clasp it with your pinky. So you have it like this. Taking your crochet hook, you're gonna go in between your ring finger and your middle finger. Right here, you're gonna go under the first string and you're gonna hook the second one, the one in the back, pull it here and twist it, okay? Then you're gonna continue with this string in the back go under and you're gonna chain one like so then you can let go of everything and it will look something like this this little tail bit is what's gonna be able to close your circle so now we're gonna do half double crochets so this is how I like to hold it I'm gonna go under I'm gonna yarn over sorry go into the hole Grab the yarn, bring it back. Yarn over and pull this one through all three. So that's one. Depending on how many petals you would like is how many 
half double crochets you're gonna do. So I'm gonna do five. If you wanna have six petals or more or less, do that many half double crochets. So yarn over and pull it through, that's two. Yarn over like this, three. Yarn over, grab it on the other side, bring it back. Four. Yarn over, grab it, pull it back. Yarn over for the last time and that's five, okay? Now you're gonna grab the little tail bit you're gonna pull it tight and your, your circle will begin to close, all right? Pull it nice and tight. Now it looks something like this. So grabbing both pieces of yarn, the little shorter one and the anchor yarn, the one connected to the yarn ball, I'm gonna look over here and it can be kind of hard to see, but this is the first half double crochet we did. And you're gonna see the V. There's gonna be two stitches like that. And we're gonna push through here. So there's gonna be one, two, three, four, and five, since I did five half double crochets. So you want to go into each of those, make sure you don't get a little lost. So we're going to go into this first one, we're going to push our hook through, and we're going to do a slip stitch with both of these. So grabbing them, pulling them through, and then slip stitching. And now just using the anchor yarn, leaving this tail pit hanging, we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. You can make these chains like pretty loose because depending on how tight they are, that means your petals will be small, like shorter. And if they're really loose, your petals will be bigger, okay? So now we're gonna begin doing half double crochets into that exact same opening that we just went into. So we're gonna yarn over, push into that opening Grab the yarn, pull it back, and pull it. Pull it nice and loose. So that's one. Yarn over again, go into that same hole. Push it through, grab it, and pull it. That's two. Yarn over into that opening. Three. Yarn over, push through, grab it four, five, six, right? It can be a little tough to keep going in. Make sure you leave this nice and loose. Run over seven, eight, oops. Reattach yourself if you get a little jumbled, eight, nine and finally 10 is our last one it can be a little tough at the end but you can do it 10 all right then we're going to yarn over and we're going to look for this first loop you want to pull through except this first one so like this now we have two loops on our hook yarn over and pull through these two Okay, then we're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. We're gonna do a slip stitch through that exact same hole we were just going through. So pushing through, grabbing our yarn, pulling it through and slip stitching, right? So that's the first petal. Now we're gonna chain three again. So one, two, three. We're gonna look for this next half double crochet we did. Okay, mine is right here, if you can see. So I'm gonna yarn over, push through both lines of the V, 
We're gonna weave this tail bit in as we go. So just placing it on top, pull this back and we're gonna pull it that. That's one, yarn over, grab it, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay? Yarn over, holding this last one back, we're gonna pull this this one through all of them like so we have two we have two we're gonna yarn over pull this one through those two we're gonna chain three one two three we're gonna go back into that same opening we just went into we're gonna do a slip stitch. And then again, we're gonna chain three for the next petal. So one, two, three, yarning over, looking for that next opening. Mine is right here. Push through, grab it and come back. So that's one. Yarn over, push it in two, three, four, pulling it nice and loose, five, don't be afraid to stretch to this little opening too, it kind of helps so you can still see it, six, seven, eight, nine, and our last one, 10. Yarning over, pulling through almost all of them, leaving the last one, right, like that. Yarning over and pulling through these two. Then we're gonna chain three, one, two, and three. We're gonna go into that same opening and do a slip stitch, like so, all right? I'm gonna chain three again, one, two, three, and now we have two left. So yarning over, pushing through, bringing it back, Oop, that's one. Yarning over, two, three, Turning over for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. Once again, we're gonna yarn over, pull through all of them except for the last one. We have two, yarn over, pull through these two, right? Chain three, one, two, three. Gonna do a slip stitch through that opening that we were just in, pushing through, grabbing our yarn, and slip stitching, right? Now we have four, we have one more petal to go and this is the last opening right here. So I'm gonna chain three. One, two, three. Yarn over, go into that opening. Pull it back for one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, 
9, and then 10. Okay, so we finished our last petal, yarn over, pull it through, like so, chain three, one, two, three, going back into that same opening, we're just gonna do a slip stitch. And then we're gonna chain one. Pull this loose, grab your scissors and snip in between, pull this away, and you can tighten this off. All right, you can add like a knot if you want to keep it like more secure, but I, I found these to be like pretty secure. So this is what your flower should be looking like. And now for the center part, all right. I'm using this yellow color. So you just wanna hold it in your hand like this. Take your hook and go in between two of these petals. So this is where we used to go into and push it like that. Grab your yarn and pull it through like this, okay? Now we're gonna do a chain of five. So one, two, three, four, and five, okay? Keeping this nice and tight, we're gonna look and we're gonna go one, two, three, four down. Not into exactly where we attach ourselves. The, we're gonna go into that chain right next to it. We're gonna yarn over, push through that chain, grab our yarn, bring it back, and pull it loose, just like we did with the petals. So that's one, two, we're gonna do 10 again, by the way, two, three, right, four, five, six, it's okay if your, your um, opening is stretching out, seven, eight, nine, and then 10, okay. I'm gonna pull on this tail bit to bring it nice and closer in. We're gonna yarn over and we're gonna pull through all of them except the last one. Yarn over and pull through those two. And then you're just gonna chain one. Pull this loose. Take your scissors again and cut this off. Tighten this off. And then we're gonna place our petal right on top, push through an opening through the back. This is the back. Grab that tail bit and pull it through the other side. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> like that. We're gonna do the same thing for this end. We're gonna push through, whoops, wrong side. <laughs> oh, I was trying to go through with the, the butt side. <laughs> gonna push through grab the yarn and pull it towards the back. Then we're gonna have both of the strings here. You wanna pull them tight, right? And you're gonna double knot it in place. Just tying it off once. And then twice. Flipping it back can fluff up your middle part if you'd like. All right, and this is what she's looking like, okay? You can turn to the back and cut off all these extra pieces now. And you have yourself little flowers, right? Super cute. You can make these size adjustable if you want them even bigger, I would say. Instead of chaining three, you could chain like five or six or something really large <laughs> and then keep pulling it. But if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope your flowers come out super cute. So now that we have all our pieces made, plus the pups, I'm gonna show you how to assemble the sweater. So 
First, we're gonna do the body. So take all your ribbing pieces and just like set it aside. And now opening up each piece and placing it where it's supposed to go. So this is a sleeve, put it over here. This is another sleeve. I'm gonna put her right here. And then we have the back panel and the two front panels, right? So first things first, make sure you weave in all your ends before you do this, because it will look way neater. Where is my crochet hook? Pushing through, grabbing it, pushing through like that. And then cutting this extra bit. First, we're gonna start off with this middle portion. So moving these sleeves off to the side, we're gonna place this exactly, you know, even like this, and we're gonna take bobby pins. Well, I am. If you have stitch markers, you can use that too. I just have more bobby pins than I do stitch markers, but we're gonna connect it at the top corner, place the bobby pin through both panels so that they're secure in place. Another one through the center point, and then one more right here at the end and doing the same thing over here. So now I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer to show you how I'm gonna connect these two pieces, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this side of the paneling. You can also choose which side is the good versus the bad side, but for me, they both look the same. Because if you do like a side better, good side should be facing each other. So we're going to flip this inside out. But okay, first starting off with this little corner area, I'm just going to remove this for now. And I'm going to push my hook through this corner and then the top corner of the back panel. I'm going to grab my yarn, my fresh piece, and I'm going to pull it through both, okay? I'm gonna place a double knot right here. And we're gonna begin doing a slip stitch right along the top. The, the top. So pushing through that same exact two corners we went into, we're gonna grab the yarn and pull it back and just chain one, all right? Now for me, I'm gonna flip my work because it's just easier. I feel like we're going in that motion. But then we're gonna go into this next opening, right? And when we go in, you wanna make sure we have both lines of the V attached. And as you can see here, you see both of them. I'm gonna push through again, and get both. So in total, we go through one, two, three, four just to make it even as possible. Grab the yarn on the other side and pull it through all of them. Now we have two. I'm gonna pull this one through there. So like that. Then we're gonna go into this next opening and the next one right here, right? Grab your yarn on the other side, bring it back and slip stitch. Okay, so once again, pushing through, making sure you have both sides of the V. And then here, again, both sides. Grab your yarn, pull it through, and then pull it through. So we're gonna continue this slip stitch, removing these stitch markers as we go, and I'll meet you closer, oh, is that a hair? Sorry, I'll meet you closer to this section, so, BRB. So 
So right here, I'm coming to a close end for the first paneling. Just gonna remove the stitch marker right now. And I have about two more. And then for the last one, you wanna make sure you get the corner of the front panel. Okay, then you're just gonna chain one. You're gonna pull this through, grab your scissors and cut right through the middle of that loop and then tighten this off. You can attach, you can um, do one knot just to keep it nice and secure if you want, but this isn't necessary because we're gonna add the ribbing. But when we put it back, it would be like this, right? When you open it, gonna look nice and seamless. So next, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side of the paneling, and then I'll be back to show you how to attach the arms. Now we will have this vest section all completed. So when you flip it inside out, it'll look like this, nice and seamless. But for right now, we're gonna keep it like how it is, and we're gonna grab our sleeve. So, your sleeve will traditionally look like this when it's open up and you just wanna like fold it in half nice and evenly. So we're gonna grab our bobby pin. We're gonna look for this top corner and attach ourselves and then we're gonna connect it to the top corner of this vest, like so, right? And then right now we're just gonna do a slip stitch from this area all the way to this other side. So you wanna make sure this sleeve is even, evenly cut in half. And I'm gonna place another bobby pin only grabbing this front panel and this front side of the sleeve. We're gonna connect them right here in this middle portion. And then again, this front part of the sleeve and the front panel right there. Then we're gonna flip our work like so. Gonna grab another bobby pin, this time grabbing the back side of the sleeve and just the back panel. Connect it right here in the middle. And then one more at this bottom corner, but you wanna make sure these two sleeves are even. So right there. So I'm gonna bring you in closer and show you how we're gonna start off our slip stitch and how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna start off with the back side of the sweater. So this is the back panel right here. And just like we did for the shoulder pieces, I'm just removing this one. I'm gonna push through right here and push through the corner of this sleeve, okay? gonna attach our yarn. I'm gonna pull it through both of them. And I'm going to put a double knot right here. So one, two, and then I'm gonna push my hook through that same opening that we attached ourselves, grab the yarn and pull it back through and do a one chain. Okay, moving all these scrap pieces to the bottom, turn my work this way, and I'm gonna begin doing a slip stitch. So pushing through that next opening, making sure both lines of the V are attached. And then for the back panel, it's not necessarily like the V section, but they're more open, right? So I'm gonna be pushing through this opening and then probably this next large opening, but just make sure to make it as even as possible as you go along. So pushing through, grabbing the yarn, bringing it back and pulling this one through this one. Slip stitch, going into the next opening.
and then the next one. So I'm gonna continue this. Okay, so we're gonna continue that slip stitch all the way up here into this corner, making sure it's only the back panel and this back part of the sleeve. Then we're gonna flip it and we're gonna finish it off over here. So I'm gonna keep doing the slip stitch all the way until I reach this bottom corner. I'm gonna chain one and cut it off just like we did up here. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side of the sleeve, okay? So this bottom section will remain open after you're done and I'll show you how to close this off right after I finish my other sleeve. Now that we have this connected, all we have left is this bottom piece, right? So again, we're just gonna take our bobby pins, connect these two corners, and then another one like around here. You can add as many or as little as you want. The main goal of this is just to like help to keep your pieces in place while you're working. But for sure, I would add one in this armpit area right? And then along the sleeve. So you don't want this to move too much. And then one right here. And one at this wrist area. Okay, so just like we did the other pieces, I'm just gonna attach myself to this bottom corner, chain one, and slip stitch all along here and down to the rest, okay? Then we're gonna do the same thing on this side as well. So then I'll meet you back once I'm done like attaching all these pieces, right? And I'll show you how to put the ribbing. All right, so I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we have all the pieces nice and connected, right? We're gonna attach the ribbing pieces. And for this, we're gonna keep our piece flipped inside out. So like, this is the wrong way. If we flip it inside out, it'll be the good way, but okay. We're first gonna start off with the bottom ribbing, okay? So just like we did these areas, I'm gonna pin it all in place. So this corner there, all the way over here, right? Then I like to grab it on the other side before I do the back, making sure that the front always looks better than the back, because you know, the front is what you see the most. Okay, my back is hurting, I'm sitting on the floor. So now that we have that all pinned in place, we're gonna be using some crocheting needles, which are these really thick needles. You could also have done this corner, all these connections with the crocheting needle. And if you don't have a crocheting needle, you can use this method down here as well. But for right now, I just wanna do a little crochet sewing. You're gonna grab this. You're gonna see that big opening. You wanna weave in your yarn through there. I like try to pinch the tail bit of the yarn as like flat as I can and pull it through, All right? And to weave this bottom area, all you're gonna do I'm gonna remove this, is you're gonna go through this bottom corner of the ribbing and through the back side of the front panel and pull your yarn through. Pull a good amount through, like at least the whole length of the bottom, you know, area. 
And then now we're going to go from the top of the front panel and then through the back side of the ribbing like that, pulling it through. And then again, front side of the ribbing, back side of the panel. So pretty much like if you pinch it like this, we're just going to weave it in and out like that. Like little zigzag. Okay. And when you pull this through, this tail bit, make sure to like pinch it right here so it doesn't undo. But if it does, you can always just easily do it again. Yeah, so we're gonna keep weaving this back and forth all the way until we reach this side. And I'll show you how I end it off on the other side. but I went all the way until this last corner. And for the bottom, I want it to be like a little cinched for the waist. So I'm gonna literally, I'm gonna tug on the string a little bit, just a little, not too much, and like make it more of a ruched effect, if you get what I mean. And then taking your scissors, you wanna leave about like, three inches of yarn on either side. And then we're gonna tie this in place. So I'm gonna grab my crochet hook and like loop it twice through that last opening. So like you just really know it's not gonna undo itself. And then when this is on your hook, right, you're gonna literally just do one chain and pull it through and tighten it off like that and place a knot. So I'll show you again on the other side. I'll place a double knot actually. Then again, on this side, this is our little tail, I'm gonna push through this bottom corner like this, and I wanna weave this piece through. I'm gonna push it through there, right? So that we're like kind of attached. And we're gonna chain one and pull it through. Tighten it off and do a double knot. Okay. This is what she's looking like. When she's flipped right sides out, she'll look way more neat. But now I'm gonna move on to, this is my tripod. I'm gonna move on to the neck area, the neck ribbing. So we're gonna do the same thing, but for this neck piece, we want this bottom corner to meet the bottom corner of the, the bottom ribbing, and we're just gonna pin it in place, right? Trying to keep this as nice, flat, and even as we can. We're gonna attach our bobby pins all along. And then before I go to the back side, I wanna do the same thing on this side. And then once all of this is connected, we're gonna do the same thing like we did at the bottom. We're gonna grab our needle 
weave it through and start weaving it. So make sure before you start, you have enough yarn to like cover the surface area of this area and just start weaving it through just like we did for the bottom. I'll meet you back after I'm done and I'll show you how to do the sleeves because the sleeves are a little trickier since we want to do that billow effect. So I'll be back when I'm done. I just finished attaching the neck area and I'm going to show you how to do the sleeve. So I did one and I'll show you how I have a lot of mess right here. So many loose the reds, but okay. I'm going to show you how to attach this side. So gather all your spare bobby pins, tie your hair back, and get to front to you. So obviously this cuff is way smaller than, you know, the area of the sleeve right here, but you're going to look for this bottom stitching that we did, and we're going to attach one corner. Right, I would say the corner with these little thread bits so they're more on the inside. And then attach it to this side, okay? Keeping this nice and flat, like as if it were to go around there, we're gonna put a bobby pin on this side. Through this corner and this corner. Next, then we have this, right? We're gonna go to the half of the cuff and attach it to the half of this sleeve, okay? Now it's a pretty large jumble mess, <laughs> but now we're gonna go to the middle of the cuff here and attach it to the middle right here. And again, the sleeve, the cuff area, I use the most bobby pins because we need to shrink this down so going to the middle of these two now, I'm gonna put one here into this middle section. And again, here into the middle, right? Make as many attachments as you need. This is what I kind of need. So now I'm gonna flip my work. Okay, now I'm on the other side of the sleeve. I'm gonna grab a bobby pin in the center and then measure out about the center right here. Next, we're gonna grab right here, the middle area to right there and then closest to the cuff over here to that middle section. So we're attaching it as best as we can, right? We're gonna take our needle and thread. And this time I just have a, I just disconnected it from the original yarn ball. I grabbed about like two feet. You're not gonna need this much, but it's better to have extra than too little. So you're gonna choose one side to start on where the opening is of the cuff, right? So I'm gonna remove that bobby pin and I'm gonna push my needle through this bottom corner, through this bottom corner, and through the bottom corner of the sleeve. And we're gonna pull it all the way through, okay? Until we reach the end of our thread. And right here, I'm just gonna tie a double knot in place. So one and two. All right, and we're gonna begin doing the same weaving technique we were doing for the other pieces, but this time it's gonna be slightly different. So we're gonna to wanna to grab this side of the sleeve and weave it through the same hole of the cuff a few times. So pulling that through. So for example, this is a fresh opening on the cuff and a fresh opening on the sleeve. I'm gonna pull it through. I'm gonna go through the next opening on the cuff, but go through the same, I mean the next opening on the sleeve, but going through that same opening we just went into on the cuff and pull it through, All right? Moving this bobby pin, going to go one opening 
next on the cuff and a fresh one on the sleeve. Going through the next opening on the sleeve, but that same opening on the cuff, okay? We're gonna keep going all the way until we reach the other side. And I'll meet you more towards the ending when I get there to show you how to finish it off and how to close off the cuff. And now that we are at this last corner bit, I'm just gonna do one more, All right? And now essentially we're gonna close this, right? This is our string right now. This is the cuff, it's open. So right now I'm gonna come across to this other side I'm gonna come across here, weave it this way and that way, zigzagging until I close it off. So. Right there. Making sure that this cuff is like, you know, enough for your arm. Just always like one of my hairs in here, gosh. Okay, coming across here this side and weaving it shut. And then when we're about to reach the last corner, we're gonna go through, right? But not pull it all the way keep it open a little bit like as if you're sewing and we're gonna weave the end of the needle through that opening it's where we would have initially finished it off but we're gonna push our needle through that middle section and pull it through like that going to end it off with a knot Whenever you make a knot and it doesn't reach the base, I'm gonna do another knot then. And yeah, then you're gonna take your scissors. Where are my scissors? You're gonna cut this bit off. All right, my knot didn't reach the base, but I'm gonna weave all these ends through. And then I'm gonna flip the sweater right sides out and I'm gonna show you how to attach all the flower bits. All right, so next, I just put down all these pups, but I'm just placing them in the areas that I want. And I'm gonna show you how I'm going to put them in place, so. All right, so use whatever color you'd like. I'm using this light pink color because I don't wanna use more of these colors because I have plans to use them for something. So you can either attach it using your crochet hook or one of these needles. I'll show you both ways. My hands are shaking so much right now. I had coffee and I usually don't drink coffee, but I have to finish this and maybe I'll have another cup because it tastes so good. <laughs> I had cold brew for the first time or like not for the first time. I made it for the first time. Oh my gosh. Okay, so first showing you the method with the hook. All you're gonna do is like hold this down with the hand. And you're gonna push through your sweater right here. Like for me, it's right here. And then you're gonna connect it with the little puff. Those like chains that we did, the chains of three, use that, okay? Oops, grab your yarn you're gonna use to attach it and pull it through your puff. Oops. And then also pull it through your sweater, like that, right? And then 
Grab your scissors and cut off this side, but leaving about like two to three inches. And then you're gonna push through your sweater again, just like a little over. And you're gonna grab that yarn again. I'm still shaking, I know, okay. <laughs> and pull it through. So you're gonna have both of them here and you're gonna pull it nice and tight. You're gonna have to do this for each petal. It's a little tedious, I know, but then when you're in the back, you're just gonna place a nice and simple boop, double knot, you know? And then I'm gonna just cut off this excess. And then one of the petals is attached. Well, I guess you don't have to do every petal, but I would do at least like two to three to keep it nice and in place. So now the method with ooh, the crocheting needle is pretty much like the same thing. You're just gonna weave this through your needle. I'm struggling. Weave it through like so. And let's see, I'm gonna connect this one, right? So I'm gonna hold it down in place. I'm gonna push through because I can know, I feel like it's around here. My needle is on the other side and I'm gonna weave it through one of those chains in the back of the flower. Pull it through and then you're gonna push it back in into a separate spot like that. You can cut off this extra thread or yarn and double knot it as well. So do whichever one you think is easier, quickest for you. Oop, right? There we have a flower, pretty connected. I'll probably add like one more right there. So you can add as many attachments as you like and add it to all the flower placements that you want. So like once you're done with the front, I'd say flip it over and use your extras to do the back. And you're done, woo! I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll do my best to like answer them as clearly as possible. If you end up making the sweater, also let me know. Tag me in a, oh my gosh, my, my words. Tag me in a picture on Instagram or on TikTok or whatever you use. These are my handles. So I hope you like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.